Welcome to Spiritual Calisthenics. Christ is in our midst. Today, on Saturday, December 23rd, we celebrate the fourth feast of the Nativity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Ten Martyrs of Crete, St. Paul, Archbishop of Neo Caesarea, the remembrance of the founding of the Holy and Great Church of Christ, Hagia Sophia, in Constantinople, St. Naum, the illustrator of the Bulgarian, the illuminator of the Bulgarians, and St. Nicholas and St. John, the new martyrs. Regarding the Ten Martyrs of Crete, these saints, who are all from Crete, contested for piety's sake during the reign of Decius in the year 250, Theodorus, Saturninus, Ephoros, Galatius, and Ebnician were from Gratinia, the capital. Zodocus was from Gnosus, Agathopus from the port city of Panormus, Basilides from Sidonia, Everestus and Pompey from Heraclion. Hailed before the governor as Christians, they were subjected to torments for thirty days, being scourged, racked, dragged upon the ground through dung heaps, stoned, spit upon. They were questioned again, but their, con their constancy roused the governor to greater fury. After subjecting them to torments more bitter still, he had them beheaded. Let us now honor Crete, that land most marvelous, which brought it forth the ten flowers revered by all, those godly pearls of Christ our God, those verdant boughs of the martyrs, for although they were but ten, the most blessed men put to shame the ten thousand armored hosts of the wicked demonic ranks. And hence they have received crowns of glory as stout-hearted martyrs of Christ's Savior. Shining like a morning star, the martyr's contest, worthily of all reverence, hath shown beforehand unto us that was born in a lowly cave, and whom the virgin conceived without seed of man. Regarding St. Naum of Orchid, disciple of St. Cyril and Methodius, equal of the apostles, St. Naum of Orchid, a Bulgarian by descent, was one of the disciples of the holy equals of the apostles Cyril and Methodius, and he accompanied St. Clement of Orchid when he preached the gospel in Bulgaria. When St. Clement set off to the southwestern region, St. Naum remained in then the city capital of Plisk. Afterwards, St. Naum succeeded St. Clement in a monastery on the shores of Lake Ogrida, where he labored for ten years. St. Naum reposed on December 23, 910, and his relics were glorified by numerous miracles, especially healings of spiritual infirmities. By a flood of tears you made the desert fertile, and your longing for God brought forth fruit in abundance. By the radiance of miracles you illumined the whole universe, O our Holy Father Naum, pray to Christ our God to save our souls. From St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. Brethren, the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then those who are men of faith are blessed by, with Abraham who had faith. For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all the things written in the book of the law, and do them. Now it is evident that no man is justified before God by the law, for the righteousness shall live by faith. But the law does not rest on faith, for he who does them shall live by them, meaning that faith is what is going to save us. If we try to rely only on the law, because we do not meet the law in every aspect, we will be held accountable by it. From the Gospel according to St. Luke, the Lord said this parable, the kingdom of God is like And it grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air made nests in its branches. Now, the mustard seed, of course, is another analogy to faith. It's the smallest of all seeds, and yet it becomes a mighty, mighty tree. And again, he said, to what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like leaven, which a woman took it and hid it in three measures of flour that was all leavened, meaning that paradise spreads to all things that it touches. He went on his way through the towns and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be a few? And he said to them, Strive to enter by the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the householder has risen up and shut the door, you will begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us. He will answer to you, I do not know where you come from. Meaning that if we don't have the virtues of God, if we do not have his countenance upon us, we will not be saved. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There you will weep and gnash your teeth, 
And when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets of the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out, and men will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at the table of the kingdom of God, meaning that everyone from all over the world is invited to the banquet of God. Everyone can enter in if they have faith, if they renounce the world. But it is very difficult, so we must enter through that narrow gate. Again, only through Christ is this possible. I hope that you've enjoyed today's spiritual calisthenics. Have a blessed and wonderful day.